talking about neurotrophic keratopathy and how we can treat it and why it's important for neural ophthalmology. So even though this is a cornea thing, a keratopathy problem, a pathy of the cornea, because it's, the cornea is innervated by the trigeminal nerve and the cornea is the most innervated organ in your body actually, you need to know that disorders that are intracranial that affect the trigeminal nerve, including both compressive and inflammatory infectious demyelinating lesions of the trigeminal nerve, or trauma or surgery for trigeminal neuralgia, can result in a secondary neurotrophic keratopathy. So the cornea requires the innervation from the trigeminal to maintain its health. That's what trophic means. And so it is a neurologic growth maintenance innervation. And if you have a trigeminal neuropathy, it damages the neurotrophic innervation to the cornea. And so then you can get corneal epithelial disease, secondary microbial keratitis, eye pain, redness. So a neuroophthalmologist or a clinician dealing with a trigeminal neuropathy needs to know about neurotrophic keratopathy. And so a lot of the tr conventional treatments for epithelial disease like topical lubrication, bandage contact lens, all the things you learned about regular corneal abrasions might not work if the problem is actually neurogenic. And so one of the exciting things that has occurred recently is the development of a procedure where the supratrochlear or the supraorbital nerve from the other side, the contralateral side, contralateral, can be used to innervate the cornea. So we can either do that with a graft, like a sural nerve graft, to get the nerve to innervate, and then you'll implant that. So this is called corneal, because you're innervating the cornea, neurotization. So a neurotization procedure is using the contralateral, supraorbital, or supratrochlear branch of the trigeminal to bring the innervation to the affected ipsilateral side on the side of a trigeminal neuropathy. We also have growth filters like Oxervate, which can be used to help stimulate the growth of nerves and as an approved use for this type of neurotrophic keratopathy. So even though it's a cornea problem, there's a neurocornea version of it called neurotrophic keratopathy.